Hey everyone, welcome to episode number four of There's Nobody Here Named Josh, the podcast where we are true to the name that there is no one here currently named Josh. Will, are you named Josh? I don't think I'm named Josh. Kev, are you? No, I'm not named Josh either. It's just going to be Will and I today. My name is Kevin and I'm joined by Will. What's going on? That's Will. Now, before we begin officially, once again, we got to lay down the ground rules for everyone that's listening. The only rule that we have, really, is that there's nobody here named Josh. That's it. It's an excellent rule. That is an excellent rule. It's very now, fitting for a name. Now, normally we'd be talking about, you know, different things with pop culture and things like that. But uh, today I let Will decide what the show was going to be about today. Now, we might still get some some pop culture references later on, but because I, I, I got a few more really obscure shows, but in a different, different way, obscure shows that I'm going to show him later on uh, that he doesn't know about yet. We talked about it a little earlier, but he doesn't know a couple of them yet. And, and that's probably getting him very worried, but uh, the, the anxiety, you know, slowly just building. Yeah, well, let's just say there's gonna there's no gonna be no cowboys and no robo horses. Wait, 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 what? No, no space cowboys and no robo horses. No, you in, didn't tell me this. In in these ones coming up, but that's not what we're talking about right now. Wait, no, we need those cowboys though, Kev. Do we? We need them. Well, we we I we might just bring back Brave Star. You never know. Oh, we, we, we gotta, shoot. Yeah. Uh, we gotta, we gotta, we, we gotta, gotta bring, it. we gotta bring back Brave Star. It's time for a time. Um, it, it is. So <laughs> all you need to do. So Will, uh, take it away, man. What, what are we doing? Okay. So for this little segment, um, really it's, it's nothing too, too special. It is just, it's Kev, it's going to be you and me talking about our opinions on a couple of things. Oh my goodness. Uh Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so, there's there is nothing political here. Good. Um, unless you consider the uh, the age old debate of Pepsi versus Coke uh, political. Oh, okay. All right. All right. So it's gonna be that kind of show. All right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So that's cool. Tell now, 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 Tell me, Kevin. What are, what are your thoughts on Apple phones or Android phones? Be- before we do this, that's what's that's the name of this segment. We might do we might do a segment like this every other show or so. The name of the segment is called "What are your thoughts?" What are your thoughts? What are your thoughts? So 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 when we do this, before we do the before we go on, I'll give you my opinion. But before we do this, the name of the segment is called "What are your thoughts?" And that's how we're going to enter into it. So my opinion on Apple versus Android. Well, um. They're both good at what they do, I guess. I've owned an Apple phone and I've owned an Android phone. And I currently have an, uh, a Google phone that's run off Android technology, right? Okay. So I have the Google Pixel 4. I just, up- I just upgraded from the Google Pixel 3. Fancy like, man. Like three days ago, three, four days ago, right? So I just got the Pixel 4. And, and I like it. I like it a lot. I like, I like Google. It, my Pixel 3 was messing up on me a little while ago. But uh, that's the only thing I guess would be a downfall for me is that Android at first seems to be pretty good. But after a while, it can get a bit glitchy. Even, even when I, I upgrade it and, and, and do all the updates and all that sort of stuff. Glitchy. Yeah, like my my Google Pixel, my Pixel Three, um, I would put the headphones in the headphone jack. Now, now, now th- this is this is uh, yeah. Thing. Now that's non-existent. That's the non-existent thing. But it isn't. But it isn't. It isn't because the charger port. Yep, the lightning port adapter. The lightning port acts like a headphone jack because yeah. i have a set i have a set of headphones that i can plug into the charger the the lightning jack at the bottom and it right. works like it works like a set of headphones and i have a set of headphones that i use 
right? So, so it doesn't have a formal headphone jack, but it still works as a headphone with headphones. So do you have like one of those pair of like headphones or earbuds that, um, that plug into the, the charging port directly, or do you have like an adapter? No, I have one that plugs right into it directly. Okay. Yeah. Like I right into it directly. And, and I, I'm not a big fan of Bluetooth and things like that. I need to have the cord because if I don't have the cord, it will, it, I'll lose them. I'll the, lose them. Uh, the oh, first time. Oh, 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 do we, oh? we, oh, do we have, we, oh, oh, Aaron just, Aaron just messaged me. So he can't make it tonight. Ah, he came on, said he can't make it tonight. And then he logged off. That's all good. That's all good. These Anyways, things happen. I think that that's true. That things have just happened, but that's okay. Uh, so, so my opinion on on Apple versus Android. Now, I talked a lot about Android. Let's talk about Apple. Let's hear my, it. My first cell phone was an Apple phone. My very okay. first, my very first cell phone was an Apple phone, and and from what I remember, it was all right. Like it was just all right. It was nothing to write home about. Like my phone that I have now is leaps and bounds better than the first Apple phone that I had. First iPhone, I think. Oh, I, had I can the, imagine. Like the i, like the original iPhone or something like that. That was my first. Yeah, I, I imagine phone. that you know that that works as like one of those one of them old cell phones. Yeah, like it, it's the, the the equivalent of one of those big phones from the 1980s that like Zach from Save by the Bell, which you probably have never heard of to begin with. Uh, but our, some of our listeners may have had like Zach, I have, have, you, have you heard of Saved by the Bell? I've heard of it. I've never watched it, but you never watched it. That's okay. Uh, that'll be for another podcast. Maybe later on, maybe later on in this one, you never know. Ooh. Um, but Zach would have this big, big honking cell phone while you're there on your computer right now, type in Zach Morris cell phone. All right, hold on. Go ahead, Zach Morris cell phone. Like people who are listening right now, if you don't know who Saved by the Bell is and Zach Morris is, I'll just go real quick. Zach Morris, Saved by the Bell was a show from the 1980s and early 90s about kids in middle school all the way up to high school and they go all the way up to college. This whole this whole thing, like they follow this guy named Zach Morris who's this typical, you know, stereotypical middle school stick up blonde hair surfer type dude right i love that red uh that red shirt with the black stripes on him yeah see you go see i know exactly the picture that you're talking about because i've seen it a million times that's zach morrison fantastic so so the phone that i have now makes my first cell phone look like that you know what i mean you know what i can i could i think i can agree with you on that one even with my first phone and like the big honking, like if you were to throw that at someone, it would give them a concussion cell phone. Yeah, the brick is back, baby. You know what I mean? Like it's massive. It was massive. Do so you think those are going to make a comeback? I hope not. I like hope flip not. Phone, flip phones are coming back, man. Well, flip phones are something. Flip phones are, are, are whatever. Like the reason why we have a flip phone is because of Star Trek, but we, we won't. That's a whole other topic. That's another versus thing that we're going to talk about maybe later i'm going to give you one. Ooh. okay i'm now i just thought of it you didn't have it on the list of topics here but i just thought of it we'll talk about it so apple versus uh, android I, I think that i would prefer android right now okay because I've, I've had uh much more dealings with android than i do with apple now you know there are some things that that apple can do that android can can't and there are some things that Android can do that Apple can't. This is so, true. Both companies have their own things that they they focus on in their uh, in their technology. So, and, um, sorry, you, I, I didn't mean to cut you off. Eric. No, no, go ahead. Okay. Um. Yeah. So both both phones are capable of like different things. Obviously, like you have a bit more customization with Android, from what I've noticed. Hmm. Um. Apple, you're a bit more restricted to what they allow and monitor like like a hawk on their uh on their ios but mm-hmm. like, of course uh, i have noticed actually that the camera quality on iphone seems to be a bit better than a lot of android phones well uh i had a friend that has iphones right 
she she had she likes iPhones, but when she lost her phone, I went and I got her uh an Android phone until she was able to get her iPhone back. And and I think that the Android phone frustrated her because she was so used to the Apple phone. Probably the uh the interface on it. Yeah. Yeah, well, the that way was... with Android phones work, like you have like seven ways to get to like all of your apps. Yeah. Yeah. That that's... that freaks me out every time. With an Android Are you an Apple guy? I'm an Apple guy. You're an Apple guy. Love the Apple phone. It's um of course not sponsored, by the way. Not, no, no, not, that, not now, sponsored, just now preferences. That, now that would be a sponsor. Oh, could you imagine? Sponsored by Apple. Uh, if we were sponsored by Apple, I wouldn't be sitting in a pretty much empty room at a desk with a computer in front of me. I'd be. This would be like, like the Batcave. <laughs> can what? Can we can we get our manager to to talk to Apple? Well, I don't know whether I don't know whether Adam could go that far. He's been pretty good. He's been pretty good, but I don't think he can go that far. You never know. Okay, so Apple versus Android, <laughs> my choice with uh, what your thoughts about that would be Android. And I'm all for Apple. Are you? Yeah, all especially right. the Granny Smith. Oh, the big green ones, big tart ones. Those oh, good. yeah. Those are Love good. Them. Now, you don't have to go in order with these topics, so pick another one. All right, okay. We don't um, have to go in order. We don't got to go in order. Just as you know. Ooh. Ooh, okay. Um how how often do you do you um do you drink caffeinated things or did you drink caffeinated things? Well, ca- caffeinated things are are one thing. Uh carbonated things are totally different. Uh I'll give you a little well, most people don't know this, but you know, Two years ago, I was about 500 pounds and I had gastric bypass surgery and I'm now down to like 240 pounds. So that's, that's a big thing. But the big thing that I cut out of my diet completely is pop. So when, so when you talk to me about Pepsi versus Coke, I have, uh, you know, I have a, a thing with that, but I think I know which one you're talking about. You're talking about coffee versus tea, right? Yeah, actually coffee. I am. Coffee, coffee versus, versus tea. tea. Yeah. All right. So I don't drink coffee. I find right. I find that coffee is very bitter. Yeah. Regard, regardless of what I try to put in it. I can't say I've never had coffee because I have. Um, I've tried cream. I've tried milk. I've tried Kahlua. I've tried everything that I could possibly drink now um have you added baileys yes yes i've tried everything i've tried everything i've tried i just wanted i needed to double check you know yeah i've tried coffee from starbucks i've tried fancy frappuccinos as a matter of fact i used to be a barista did you so so, oh yeah back in the steamy bean days do you, Damn. Do, you, do you remember do you remember the the local store here like no one listening unless you're from here around that timeline would know what the store is but do you remember the steamy bean I don't think I do No uh the steamy bean is you know on Great Northern Road the the lone place beside McDonald's Oh my god that's what it was called I do remember it Yeah that's oh my where God. that's where it was. That was called a steamy bean. I used to be a barista in there. I worked. I I made a pretty. Uh, apparently, I made a good frappuccino, according to my wife. I um I am convinced that, that we have met before at that drive-through. We very possibly well could have. I am one hundred percent convinced. You cannot. Not tell me otherwise. We likely had a so so going back to the thing, coffee versus tea, right? Um, right. I'm not a coffee guy. However, I'm also not a tea guy, really. Which is it doesn't almost, just have to be like hot tea or hot coffee. It can be like like iced tea. Iced, yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's back this up a little bit. Okay. I'm I'm not a coffee guy. 
hot or cold. Right. Um, but I've been known to down quite a bit of iced tea. <laughs> now. So by all, by, by technicality, you're a tea drinker. Well, yeah. If, if you want, if you want to go with that. Now, you know, it, it's, it's, debatable what what kind of tea like if you you call like lipton iced tea or is this like chemical iced tea or just like cold sweetened tea because when you go over to the united states you know because we're on a border town right yeah so when you go over to sioux michigan asking for an iced tea over there is something different than asking for an iced tea here is it actually it is because over in Sioux, Michigan, if you go to a restaurant or something, you ask for an iced tea, they'll literally just bring you a cup of cold tea. That's exactly what iced tea is over there. The, it's see the first thing I expect when when someone asks for iced tea is that like someone will bring them um, like a canned brisk iced tea that's now in a cup. No, that's, that's, that stuff is over there. That stuff is over there. But you, you have to ask for it specifically. Because if you ask for an iced tea over there, at least my experiences over in the United States, it might be something different. If something's different, write into us, you know, send us an email, uh, send us a, a, a message on our Facebook page, Twitter, you know, send tweet us a message, us. tweet at us, you know, whatever you need to do. Um, but with my experiences over there, when you go to McDonald's, you have your – like I'll use McDonald's for example. When you go over to McDonald's, you have an option. You have like brisk in the whole, you know, uh, you know, drink dispensers. Yeah. But then over on the side, beside the drink dispensers, you have unsweetened and sweetened tea, like sweet tea. Like there's unsweetened and sweetened. So, so if you get the unsweetened, it's literally just cold tea. That's exactly hmm. what it is. It's just cold tea, tea with ice in it. So it's iced tea. But when you get sweet tea, it's like sweetened with sugar. So it's like cold tea with ice, but with sugar in it. I think I've actually experienced something like that here in, like in Canada. Oh yeah. You can get it in Canada. Like some of the bottled tea that you get in the, get in the store. Is literally just cold tea. Uh, no, like going to a restaurant, asking for iced tea, and then actually getting just cold tea. Yeah, that's a thing. That's totally a thing. You know, so... I, I didn't realize that was... Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's pretty much For the longest is. time, I thought they were the crazy people. Who is Apparently crazy it's people? me. Uh, the uh, pre people who were working at the restaurant that day. Oh, what restaurant was that? Do you know? Oh, I have no idea. It was in like, um, oh my God, it was like Blind River or something. Hey, you know what? I like them all. So I guess by Blind all tech, I, I guess all technicality, I'm a tea drinker. You know, I'll be is, honest. I'll, I'll, I'll be honest with you, Kev. I have no idea where it was anymore. I forgot the name of it. That's something fine. with river. <laughs> Probably Blind River, Garden River. Not Garden. No, Blind River, White River. Mm -hmm. Might be of, White River. There's a, there's a lot, lot of, of rivers. I was going to say, there's a lot of rivers around here. Yeah, there's, well, we don't have a river song. No, if we no, did have, that's... however, going a little off track as usual, Always. I've met, I've met Alex Kingston. No way. Here in Sault Ste. Marie. Seriously. Absolutely. She was work. She did a movie here. Man, I miss all the yeah. cool things. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She did a movie here, and I was in. Uh, oh, what the hell? I forget the name of the store. But she came in, and she ordered a sandwich, and she left. I didn't think about it because I was a bit shell shocked at the time, because I was just starting to watch Doctor Who, and I just started watching River Song, and then all that sort of stuff in it. And and uh, in walks Alex Kingston, River Song herself. So just, just chilling, you know, just chilling. A sandwich. <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? It's kind of sandwich, but we're digressing too much. Yes, of course. So coffee versus tea. I think I know where you stand because I see your pictures on Instagram all the time. But you holding a big ass cup of coffee. Um, you know what? What if I told you that 
I do prefer tea. Do you? Yeah. Wow. I love coffee. Don't get me wrong. Freaking love that stuff. Wakes me up completely out of coffee. I need to go get more at some point. Uh, and popcorn. But I um, I love tea. There's more variety with tea. You know what? I, I have to agree with you. I have to agree with you. You know, when, when the malls are open, I'm probably going to go get some loose leaf because I, I prefer loose leaf tea. I respect that, actually. You know, I prefer loose leaf tea when I do drink hot tea and when I do drink, you know, just cold tea. I prefer loose leaf tea. When it comes to like convenience, uh, uh, just getting like a tea bag is is easiest. Yeah, really. but those tea bags are pretty awful. You have no idea what's actually in them. But before we do this, uh, I just forgot. If any one of you out there have an opinion on anything that we're talking about today, like Apple versus Android, coffee versus tea or whatever, tweet at us, go on Facebook, For sure. you know, tell us your opinion on whether you like sweet tea or whether you like Apple or whether you like Android. No opinion is wrong. Tell uh, us why we're wrong in our opinion. Yeah. Yeah. T- <laughs> t- t- yeah. Tell me why, tell me why I'm a heretic for drinking tea over coffee. Or, or you know, I'm. I'm tell wrong me how like I'm egg. just nothing but a hipster for liking Apple phones. That's right. You know, I'm surprised you don't have your hair in a in a man bun right now. I would never do that ever. In my well, life. I should I should do that if I ever had hair. I'm quite bald. But you are quite bald. I am quite bald. My hair grows upside down. My hair grows backwards. My yeah, what goes... I was about to say is <laughs> when, when you lack in in uh, you know hair, you make up for in facial hair. That's correct. My hair grows upside down. It goes backwards. <laughs> anyways, anyways. You have a beautiful beard. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, so so we're, we're, we're going to move on from that one. So I choose tea and you choose tea. I'd say we're in agreement then. We're in agreement with tea? All right. In agreement on so tea. So let's, let's do a couple more before I enter into uh, to, to what I'm going to say, what I'm going to bring to the table. Okay. Uh, let's, let's jump back then to mm-hmm. um to the apple versus android okay and move from um pc versus mac oh okay now if you want we can add linux to the mix okay full disclosure okay what's up i am a console guy i am a toy collector i am okay. uh i i i'm that kind of a nerd right I don't know much about PC. I don't know much about, about you know, Mac. I really don't. Uh, PC uh, Master Race. I I don't I don't know. Like like um. <laughs> I'm re- I'm recording this on a on a PC. Yeah. Okay. But uh, you know, laptop, I'm pretty sure, right? Yeah, it's a laptop. So yeah. So so I'm recording this on on a laptop, and it's a PC, right? Uh the the computers i use at work are pc yeah um when i was in film school we were taught all on macs yeah that tracks like <laughs> that's, that's still the case we were all on macs like everything we did was on a mac every single thing we ever did um yeah so mac I, has become like the industry preference i'm pretty sure so i've done i've done both Right, it's on Mac and PC, so I don't really have an opinion on that. Okay, I, I, um, because I've done both. But if I had to choose, if I had to choose, um, I'd probably pick a PC. the The only reason why is because that's what I'm used to, right? It's like, what you're familiar with. That's what I'm familiar with. It's more than what I'm familiar with because. The only really time I've ever used Max in a in a long duration period of time would be when I was in film school. Huh. And okay. that's it. Like like every other television job I've ever had or movie job I've ever had, I've worked with PC, which is weird. So, you know, it's just it's just yeah, that's just the way that that is. So if I had to choose that one, I would pick PC only because it's what I know. Okay. What about you? Well, this one's an interesting one for me personally. Um, the way I see it, like I, I added Linux like just a second ago. The way I see it, 
Linux and Mac OS are their work computers. Okay. They are, they're made to be like for working. Like if you work in, um, in computer programming, you're likely using either a Windows or a Linux PC. More likely the Linux. Um, if you're doing graphic design or uh, film stuff, you're mm-hmm. probably using a Mac. If you're at home, like playing games, running virtual machines, uh, recording a podcast at like 8.30 at night, <laughs> uh, you're, or almost 9. Even, almost 9 now. It's almost 9. Yeah. Uh, you're, you're probably running Windows. Yep. I yep. Um, haven't used Linux much. I'm not a huge, huge fan of how it works. It's kind of like if Mac and Windows were one with, um, I guess, like the, the interface of Windows, but a lot of controls on uh, Mac or um, vice versa, rather. Um, but I think I'm going to stick with Windows. I could see that. You know, I have a friend of mine. I have a friend of mine. that We, we might circle back to this in another podcast, but I have a friend of mine who's completely into all kinds of computer things like all kinds of computer things in his house. He has his room where it's just nothing but computer stuff. Jesus. And and man, like make his own server. Yeah. Yeah, he does. Well, actually I have a couple of people who, uh, who's, who's really into computer stuff. Like one of them's even on our list here, like Demolito. Like Demolito oh. 01 here. That's my buddy Vern. Like I'm gonna I'm gonna tell him later on that I mentioned his name on this, so he'll probably listen. He might. But but he's he's a he's a computer guy. Right? And okay. and he's he's a big computer guy. Like he he knows computers inside out and backwards. He always gets me to test different servers, different things that he's created. Uh, and, and, and he, he's one of my go-to guys. I have two go-to computer guys and he's one of them. So, so maybe we'll circle back on a different podcast on a different episode about, about Mac versus PC, because maybe I'll, that'll likely convince him to come on. We can get him to talk all, all computery and all computer. I'll have, I'll have like a like basic that. understanding of what he's talking about. And yeah. Maybe yeah. have some. He, he can, he can go on. Like I'm telling you right now, he can go on. But if I were to bring my friend Kyle on here, you know, if I were to bring my buddy Kyle on, like I'll tell him that I mentioned his name on this one too. And he'll likely listen too. So there's two listens. Yay. But, uh, <laughs> but if I were to bring him on, Vern and Kyle at the same time, I'll just introduce the show, tell the topic, and just let them go. We could probably just like sit back and listen to them. You know what I mean? Uh, so, intervening every now and then when they get too nerd aggressive. Yeah, <laughs> nerd aggressive. I like that. Yeah, nerd aggressive. Nerd aggressive. So, so I don't know. Maybe that's another one. But uh, Mac versus PC. I would choose PC. Okay. So right. because you mentioned consoles. Yeah. Okay. I think I know where you're going with this. Of course, everyone yeah. knows this one. Yeah. Xbox or PlayStation, my guy. Oh my god, it's PlayStation. Really? PlayStation. PlayStation almost all the way because I've never I've never really gotten into Xbox. I've played the Xbox, honestly, I have. But as a console, as a console gamer, I don't really see the difference. Like what's the difference between X- Xbox and PlayStation? Um, well, except wanna, one, except like, one's made by Sony and one's made by Microsoft. That's true. That is one difference. Um, I think a, a couple other big differences are the parts they use um, and just the general specs. Okay, like of uh, the of the consoles. Like like again, I I might have to I might have to you know turn in my nerd card, right? You know what I mean? Right. Like my, my nerd nerd society membership. Uh, but but I don't really see the difference. I really don't like I, I can I can hear if people are listening to this, I can hear the the seething anger that some people are going to give to us right now. When, right, when I'll, I, I'll summarize it for you if you want. OK, um, so the biggest difference differences rather are how they run, uh-huh. uh, how the controllers are, as you know, sometimes a con- certain controllers feel better. Yeah, OK. And um, console exclusive games. 
so so pretty much the only difference between a Sony PlayStation and a Microsoft Xbox is how the controller feels and what games you can get with them. That's uh, it. I mean, pretty much at that point, like it is. Obviously, there's that first point of how they run. Is I, I'm I don't know which one runs better, but I'm sure. Like if I were to look into it, I'd be able to tell you for sure. Um, okay, but 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 why? I know the console wars, man. I grew up, I grew up in the realm of Nintendo versus Sega Genesis, right? Like Nintendo I, won. I, I grew up. It did totally did without question. Nintendo definitely won without question. But but I, I remember, I remember, you know, the Super Nintendo versus Sega Genesis, or the Super NES. It's actually actually the Nintendo was without. The original Nintendo was out without competition for a while, but then the Genesis came around, and then Super Nintendo came around, and was Super Nintendo versus Genesis, and there would be you know uh, commercials on TV bad mouthing them both. Like Nintendo would bash Genesis, and Genesis would bash Super Nintendo. It's it's just one of those things. But you know, it's just I grew up in that kind of an era. So the original but, console wars, the original like console wars. So I'm a veteran of the console wars. That sounds... That and because sounds, of this... That sounds pretty, of, you know, nerd legendary. It does. It does. <laughs> because you lived through the original console wars, you just can't see the point of the of the modern one. No, I, I just can't see the point of the modern one. You know, people... This is the only know. difference between, you know, Nintendo uh, and, and, and the Sega Genesis at that point, I imagine, was the games you can get and the hardware it was running, as well as the, the controller feel. You know what? I guess I can see that now that you put it like that, I guess I can see the similar similarities, right? I can see the similarities between between, you know, PlayStation and Xbox. Because I guess if you want to call it, I don't know, e- either way, it's it's the newer and upgraded version of Nintendo versus Genesis. Exactly. Right? So, you know, the Super Nintendo controller fit better in your hand. It had four had four buttons, five, six. It had six buttons, you know, and and two panel buttons at the top, and and the four ones that you can control with your with your fingers here, with your thumb. Sorry. And the Genesis, the original Genesis controller had, you know, the D pad didn't have any any shoulder buttons, but it had only three buttons. Right. It had A, B, and C, where. And I guess you could still you could use start or select or something like that with a button, I forget. But the Super Nintendo one had X B A and Y and then L and R at the top on the Super NES. And they stayed pretty consistent with, with that uh throughout the times. Like you got you went to Game Boy and you had just A B L R and the D pad. And then yeah. DS came with X Y A B and L R. You know what I mean? So yeah, so there you go. So I guess I kind of see it. But I've only ever owned, out of the newer consoles, I've always owned Nintendo. Of course. Right? I've always owned Nintendo. I've owned every Nintendo console ever made. Even the Switch. Even the Switch. Do you also have the Switch Lite? I, no, but it's still the same. What about same the thing? DS? I do. I have like the original DS. I have the the smaller square one. I have all of them. Okay. At one point, I have owned, maybe with the exception of the Switch Lite, but I guess that's not really a new console. It's just a yeah, that's just version like a, a of lighter life. version of the Switch. <laughs> yeah. So, like, I have the Switch. I was one of the first ones to have it in the Sioux. You know. So, so it's just. That's just there. So I have owned every single Nintendo console ever made at one point. I went on a whole rant during one of my live streams about how I had the original DS and all of my, like all of the people around me, all my peers had the, the DS. Wait, Lite, you have a, was, you have, you have a live stream. I do. I do have a live stream and you can check it out at twitch.tv forward slash Ryman three. If you're interested, how can you, how do you spell Ryman three? I don't, I don't know be, how to spell it. That would be R I M A N three. Oh, I just wanted to get that shot in there. Got him. 
That was that was smooth. I like that. Oh, thank you, thank you. That's so very it's good. All, it's Shameless like self-promo. I, it's almost like I know what I'm doing. Also, a nice self-plug <laughs> to uh, Goods in the Woods podcast. Ooh, Goods in the Woods the podcast. Wood. Later, uh, earlier on this week, they shouted out to us. Uh, my my producer showed me a a text. Uh, texted me as a matter of fact. I'm going to um, go to there. So you you continue on about your your thing about PlayStation and Xbox and I'm going to find that text where they shouted right. out to us. So you go, you go do that. Yeah. I'll, I'll talk about, um, well, I'll finish up that thing with, uh, with the DS on the live stream. So mm-hmm. I was talking to, I don't know who it was, but I was talking to someone on it and I was telling them how, I think it was my buddy Ross, how I had the original DS and everyone had the DS light and the DS light was like a slightly smaller, more square version of the DS with two little, like squares on the on the on the back of the top screen, mm-hmm. which looked like a, a DS, and that's the one that everyone had at the at the okay. playground when I was when I was a youngin. <laughs> playground, okay, continue. Um, so I roll up one day with with the original DS, this this you know brick, <laughs> this blue brick, <laughs> and everyone's like, "What is that?" I'm like, "It's a, <laughs> it's a DS." What do you mean? What is it? You you have a different one. This is mine. <laughs> And everyone's like, what do you mean? No, no way. Play a game. Show me. So I had to prove to everyone that it was a legitimate DS because they didn't understand it. That's almost like that's almost like people and the original Game Boy. But before we go into oh that, God, I, I, yeah. I was I was wrong. It's Goods from the Woods podcast. Goods from the Woods podcast. Goods from the Woods podcast. Uh, they, they shouted out to us uh, a little while ago. doesn't really have a date here, but I think it was, yeah, probably was probably about a week ago or so. Goods from the woods podcast. They sh- totally shouted out to us. You can follow them, uh, on Twitter. I guess that's the only one that I have here. I guess probably have a lot more, but at goods pod, the goods pod. You can follow the them goods on, pod. The goods pod. You can follow them on Twitter. Um, they again, they probably have a lot of other social medias. I don't have that on me at this time. But the goods from the woods. They gave us a big shout out, so I'm giving them a shout out on my show. Uh, so let's go back to. Uh, so listen to them. Sorry. So let's go back to what we were talking about. Uh, yeah. Game so Boy. We were, the the we were Game Boy. About, uh, yeah, the Game Boy. The original Game Boy. Oh my goodness! This original Game Boy, the gray brick. It was literally a brick. Yeah, it was just yep. a brick. But um, yeah, the lime green screen that was really difficult oh to God. play at night. It was just really bad. Uh, Game but, Boy Advance came out with a nice a nice feature for that with the uh, the the lighted screen. Yeah, well, you could get you could get different uh, different add ons for the Game Boy um, back in the day. Like it would come up with a big light screen, but it would um, the the add-ons that you could add on to the original Game Boy would make it so awkward to play. It was like Inspector. Oh, it was like it was like Inspector Gadget, just different things just clicking onto this Game Boy thing that would just make it so hard to play. Would but, you say uh, that it is like phones now? No, you remove the headphone jack. Now, if no. you want to charge your phone and listen to music with your old headphones, you need to add an adapter for it. Um, you have a phone, not an octopus. Yeah, kinda. I, I guess I could see the similarities, but but it's just it's more of a. It's like taking a brick, like an actual brick. Yep. And then adding another brick. Another brick. <laughs> on, I love how that works. On top of that, and but then, and then adding pieces of another brick onto that, like not so, a whole brick, but like so. If you were to you were to take two bricks in a T formation, and then you to take pieces of another brick and stick them in random other uh, places on the first. Yeah, brick. yeah, that's that's the kind of the thing that that the, the original Game Boy it was it was massive. You should totally. I love it. You should totally take a look at, you know, if you want to Google it or our listeners want to Google it and are not familiar with it, because there the might be some of them. Game Boy? There might be someone out there, the original Game Boy and all the accessories that go with it. 
The there accessories a, I'm not familiar the, with. There, there was even a that. there was even a printer. Yes, I re- I did hear about the printer. A printer for the original game. A printer. Why? Like why? Why was that? But but we're we're digressing. Uh, PlayStation versus Xbox. Yes, um, PlayStation versus Xbox. The, the only the one the one I would be on Team PlayStation. And you I'm know, ass- I respect that. I'm assuming that you're on Team Xbox. I um, honestly, I I I'm kind of a neutral party on it. Really? I have like I I do own an Xbox. It has been ages since i've turned it on so it's probably like 18 billion updates that i have to install um but i, I i've played xbox more than playstation okay i have played them both and honestly like i i don't see the difference well you know that's 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 a thing right that's a thing when i'm playing it it feels like i'm playing a game and that's all that matters i'm having fun i am immersed in the game now now we're we're gonna smoothly segue into another one. All right, so we're gonna go into another one. I'm gonna choose a topic this time. Now okay. we talked about this earlier, right? So we're gonna smoothly segue into Mario versus Sonic. Ooh, right? We talked about Nintendo versus Genesis, right? So that's that's a nice smooth segue into Mario versus Sonic. Because again, I was there at the beginning. <laughs> you know, it's just I feel old. Like it's talking about like 1980s and stuff like that. I got my Nintendo back in my day. Back in my day. I'm <laughs> I'm pushing 40, man. Like I know I I know like I can't, still can't believe those words are coming out of my mouth. I'm pushing 40. But uh you know, it's it's just Mario versus Sonic. So if I had to choose one, if I had to choose one, it would be Mario. The only reason why I would choose Mario is because, again, familiarity. Okay. Like, I, All right. Uh, but if I had to choose one who had the better movie, that would be Sonic. Because, <laughs> again, that's, that's we, talk, we talked about the Super Mario Brothers movie, and we, we won't go back there. In episode one, we did and, mention and we, that we, the internet cyberbullied a, a movie studio. Yes, we did. You know, and and Sonic the Hedgehog has a good has a better movie than Mario. That without que- true. without question, a much no, better they, movie like, than Mario. We don't. Where was Bowser though? In in the original Mario movie? Yeah, where is my boy Bowser? He was played by Dennis Hopper. That wasn't Bowser. I know that wasn't Bowser, but we're, we're okay. But Mar- <laughs> Oh, don't do that again. Uh, Mar- Mario versus Sonic. I would choose Mario only because of the familiarity and the, uh, the popularity because you know, it's really funny about all this, this question in particular, What I have seen more people get upset over this question than any of the other questions I have on this list. Oh, I got one for you. I can't believe you haven't put that there. I got oh, one for you. Oh, the, I got the one wars and the trek. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, but I don't but, know how I didn't think of it. But but we'll 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 finish this one and then we'll go on to that one and then maybe we'll we'll go on to what I'm going to show you later on. So we can leave some of these Hell topics yeah. for for another one. But uh, Mario versus Sonic. I would choose Mario only because of familiarity and 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 the popularity and all the stuff that Mario's done. Oh you know yeah, I mean? it's, it's it is kind of weird to think about that. Like he he's been a space cadet, technically. Space what? Space cadet. Really? Wow. Technically, well, Mario Galaxy. Mario yeah. Galaxy. Yeah, we're, okay. we're, I'm 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 trying to frame that within a, a job title. <laughs> well, he's not like Barbie. Right where Barbie has been, every single that's also true. You know, every single job on the planet Barbie's done. You know what I mean? Mario like, is also a sports superstar. Oh, with Mario Tennis and Mario versus Sonic at the Olympic Games or stuff like that. Things yeah, like that. That's that's actually what um what inspired this question. I saw a video 
of Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games, and I thought, oh, wow, that's that's a that's thing. just that's just Nintendo. Well, because Mario owns Sonic now. Yeah, Nintendo owns Sonic. Yeah. So it bought out Sega. So so it 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 owns it. So he can he can do that now. He can actually have Mario versus Sonic, but in a but in a friendly competition type of way. Of course, it's like when uh, when people didn't know that Ruffles and Lay's were actually the same company. Well, there you go, right? Yeah, you'd always think that it's one versus the other, and you have to pick a favorite, but they're actually the same. They just look different. Says okay. A lot about, uh, okay. Society, if you think about it. So if we're gonna get into the the nerd questions of all nerd questions, okay. We're gonna There's pick a lot of pressure on me with this. We're 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 gonna pick. We're not gonna do Wars versus Trek. Oh. Okay? But we're gonna do. We're gonna do. We're gonna pick one of them, and we're gonna we're gonna. Put two figures from one of them against each other. What's your opinion on Picard versus Kirk? Who's your favorite? Kirk versus Picard. That is a nerd question for the Star Trek people over the generations since Next Generation came out. So you're familiar with Kirk, right? Can I make a confession? Oh, wait, wait. But you're familiar with Kirk, right? You please Can tell you... me you you know who Captain Kirk is. I, I I do know who Captain Kirk is. Okay. And you know who Captain Picard is. Yep. Okay. So what's your what's your confession? I haven't actually watched Star Trek. What? What? You've <laughs> never actually watched Star Trek? No. Like, I've, ever? I've picked up, like, bits and pieces throughout the years. But I've never actually gone and watched Star Trek. Oh, Will, buddy. <laughs> what? What? Kevin, oh. Kevin just disowned me. Oh, man. I've ruined your whole thing. <laughs> You've never watched Star Trek? I've never watched it. Not a single episode. No. But let me guess. Let me guess. You've seen every single Star Wars movie, right? No, not every single one. Uh, probably a good portion of them. Um, I saw... You've seen the, you, I, yeah, I saw the originals, you know, like one, two, three, four, five, six, and I saw seven, and then I saw nine. Okay, that's more Star Wars than I've seen. Um, I've seen yeah. the, I saw the original three. I've seen one, two, three, four, five, six. So I've seen the first six. Right. If you were to ask me anything about like seven and nine, I would not be able to tell you anything about it. I forgot all of it. There's a Star Trek character called Seven of Nine. She's, that is amazing. She's hot. Seven of nine. She's a female Borg in Star Trek Voyager. But see, I know uh, what the Borg is. Yeah, good. Okay, wa I, okay. You want to see seven of nine? Look her up. Go on Google and type right. in seven of nine. Like spell the words out. Seven of nine. I'll wait. Seven of nine. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that's a character. That's a character. She's that's hot. She's hot. She's a very attractive woman. She is a very attractive woman. Somebody she, here on Google Images. Um, uh, you don't even go there. there. I bet you there's some pretty nasty ones. That's not what I'm referring to. Oh, okay. Oh, no, it's DeviantArt. Sorry that Google Images is pulling from DeviantArt there. Okay. Someone on DeviantArt has been so kind as to create a 3D rendering of uh, Seven of Nine, but male. Oh, Okay. And, I, you know, I greatly appreciate the effort and time that they went into that. And it's great that there are members of this fandom that love it so much that they want to see the characters gender bent. But I didn't, you know what? I didn't need to see all of what's showing there. <laughs> uh, I don't even Nothing want to is I hidden. Don't, 
I don't even want to look that up. You should pop it on our pop it on our chat room here. And uh, oh, mi- Mr. Adam, Mr. Adam, our producer, will will pop it on our. It's gonna our look at it and think, "What the fuck are these guys doing?" Media. Like, what are you, what are you talking about? Oh my god, this is ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, you should pop. I it like in to our- imagine that anyone in this Discord uh, mm-hmm. who doesn't actually know what's going on, well, is, is just bombarded with with all these things without context well and they just get scared for their life well i don't know whether uh, no one's really listening to us right now we're recording it but it's true oh okay let's see what you popped <laughs> yeah. let's see what you popped oh my god <laughs> <laughs> nothing okay. is hidden okay so so look it up look it up male seven of nine uh no, just seven of nine just seven of nine, and, and you'll I, see. That's all I searched. Seven of nine, and you get a lot of the actual thing. May, male scroll seven down of a nine. little bit, and it's it's just yeah. right there. Uh, rule sixty three, seven of nine. Rule sixty three, seven of nine. I don't know what rule sixty three is, but I don't want to look it up right now. Yeah, don't. We yeah, all know about the other internet rule. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Okay, so that that was that that was our 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 first segment with. Uh, what's your thoughts on? Right. Uh, well, actually, you know, you didn't, you didn't give your opinion on uh, Kirk or Picard. Oh, Kirk or Picard! I forgot all about that. Oh my god, we just we went well, yeah, it's because I, I didn't watch Star Trek and you got Kirk, disappointed. Kirk or Picard? Well, okay, well then we can't really answer that right now. Well, okay, we you, can... you can answer it for the people Not... that are listening. Okay, fine. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna enter back into this. Okay. You have to have homework. Now, I don't know whether you watched Brave Star or Silverhawks or or anything like that. I don't think you did. Did you? No, you didn't. I didn't. Judging by judging by look your big pause. I've Um, been looking into a lot of things. (laughs) But but you gotta do this. No, one hundred percent. I'm looking it up on Netflix right now. Okay. You gotta do this. You gotta watch. Both the original Star Trek and Next Generation are on Netflix, I believe. I think they are. Okay. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff here. There's there's Enterprise, Deep Space Nine. Okay, no, you need Voyager. you need to watch you need to watch original Star Trek. Not the new movies. The original Star Trek show. Now I have to warn you, they're as campy as all fuck. Nineteen sixty eight. Correct. There's all right, campy, that's the one. Campy as all fuck. Like, really bad. I am going to watch it. Okay, but there, there's a lot There's a lot there. Don't... If you want to binge it, binge it. Go ahead. Uh, but just, just be warned, it's really bad. Um, I will do my best to watch it. <laughs> okay, so, so my opinion on Kirk versus Picard, um, I would have to go with Picard. Again, I don't know whether people listening to this will will uh, differ from me. They probably will. I guarantee you they will. But I would have to go with Picard. Why? Because he was he was more up to date. He was more at the time, but he was more up to date. He was more into he went deeper in space than what Kirk did. Right, that's so, pretty cool. Like that, that's that's an achievement right there. He went deeper into space than what Kirk did, and and uh, he met more aliens. He had more uh, opportunities, in my opinion. So, so we're not going to go too heavy into that because you don't know anything about Star Trek. See, but, what I lack in knowledge of Star Trek. I make up for knowledge of Stargate SG One, so it's all good. I've never seen Stargate SG One. I love it. It's a wonderful show. I've heard good things about it, but I've never seen it. I okay. highly recommend it. I I will if you watch Star Trek enough so you can give your opinion for Kirk versus Picard. I promise I will watch Stargate SG One. Hell yeah, brother! Let's do it. So, so you do we're that. You, you do that. So, right now, we're gonna we're gonna end this little segment. Okay. Yeah. This this is this has been. What are your thoughts on what What are your thoughts on? Right. So that's our little segment. What are your thoughts on? So now we're gonna go into 
kind of like an extended version, a little bit of extended version of what our last few shows were about. I'm heavy into uh, TV. TV. <laughs> Just TV in general. TV in general. I make TV for a living. That's what I do. Right? I, yeah, I make I make, I make television for a living. Uh, my my day job is I work master control at an online TV station. Right, that's my. What you think about it is basically just a, a big fancy live stream. That's right, just a big fancy that's live all, stream. That's that, that pretty, is all TV is in, in the long run. So I I I control. I am master control at uh, is all the buttons online. All the buttons, all all the on online TV station. So I'm into TV, but I'm mostly into nostalgic TV. Okay. Nostalgic, Everyone loves nostalgia. Nostalgic TV. As a matter of fact, I'm going to give you a link, right? Okay. A, a link on our on our Discord here that our buddy producer Adam will put on our uh, social media. Oh God, that thumbnail is haunting. Okay, so these are. Uh, I, all the information that I have here is is off a uh, off a YouTube page called Buzz Cuts. I'm not sure whether they're going to hear us, whether they're going to listen to us, but this was way back in 2018. This is the eight strangest Canadian kids shows. Now, all the shows that we talked about before: Brave Star, Silver Hawks, Thundercats, Gummy Bears. You know, all of them, Smurfs. All of them were American. American TV has had a big role, uh, right? In, in American TV, you know what I mean. So yeah, for the little bit of TV I did actually watch, you know, it was mostly American, some British. When 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 I was growing up, you know, uh, Saturday morning cartoons were all American, almost all American. I would have to say ninety five percent of all the cartoons I've ever watched were Canadian, were American. That actually doesn't surprise me in the slightest. But, oh my goodness, Canada has had some cringe when it comes to kid when it comes to kids shows. Back in the day when when these were live on TV, when these were new on TV, they were the bomb. Okay, they were the bomb. They, I imagine, like in the moment, it was pretty cool. But looking back, it's weird. Is it one of those things? Yeah, it's one of those things. Okay. Right? So our our the first one that we're talking about now is the first one here on the list that he has. It's a show called The Polka Dot Door. Okay. Okay. The Polka Dot Door. Now, if you want to play the the theme song, right? Um, I, I'm doing it right now. I'm yeah, looking play, at it. Play play it's, the theme song of The Polka Dot Door. I'm very frightened. I have that song forever stuck in my head. Okay. That show ran from 1971 to 1993. 1971. 71 to 90 seriously? 1971 to 1993. Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah. And the whole this premise, is... the whole premise of it, okay, was these two human characters were singing and dancing in this playhouse type deal that had a door with polka dots on it. So that's why it's called the polka dot door. It's it all. The main character is actually the door. The main character technically is the door, but the, the, the second, the secondary character was a character by the name of polka Roo. Polka Roo, which is a, a, character whose name combines the word polka dot and kangaroo okay okay i'm looking at i'm looking at a video and like it's some yeah. weird simon says thing and it does not look good this did not age well you know so so the the the, the whole premise is is that these two human characters would talk to these dolls oh my right? god these stuffed dolls so there was bear and and Humpty and Dumpty and sure you know like I forget the rest of these Humpty Dumpty Marigold and Bear 
Okay. Did they just give up? So bear? could they not have gone with Barry? I, I don't know. So it was like <laughs> Marigold, Bear, and Humpty and Dumpty. So they would they would talk like, and they would all every day of the week would have a different day. Right. right. So, like, Monday was Treasure Day, Tuesday was Dress Up Day, Wednesday was Animal Day, Thursday was Imagination Day, and Friday okay. was Finding Out Day, right? It was the same day every day of the week. Finding and Out Day? Finding Out Day. I have no idea what that even means. Um, what? <clears throat> I could look it up, but I'm I'm not really, like, Finding Out Day. But, so, so Polkaroo would be this character where he would come in and the female, because it was always male and female hosts. Right. Right. So the, they would all play in the backyard and then all of a sudden the female would go and sing a song or play with the, the toys there in the sandbox. And then the male host would vanish. And then all of a sudden Pokeroo would show up. Not suspicious. Right. And the female host, Talking down, like there was a lot of talking down to to kids back then. Oh, you know what I mean, talking down to them. But um, the female host like that. would would pretend that you know, Pokeroo was there, but Pokeroo was there. But you know, and then when Pokeroo would disappear, the male host would come back, and the 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 female host would be like, oh, you missed Pokeroo. Pokeroo was here and I missed him again. Wah, wah. You know what I mean? So that that's the whole thing about Polka Dot Door. So I watched- it, it is one of those like, oh, you never see um, Bruce Wayne and Batman in the same room. Things. Pretty much. Pretty much. Cool. Pretty much. I watch this show like a religion. That scares me. Like a religion, I watch this. I show I fear for all you the time. at the moment, all the, all the time. But that's Polka Dot Door. Okay, so we're not going to go too. We're not going to go too long on all of these. I'm on the I'm on the Wikipedia for Polka Dot Door. And Are you? Like I can't find anything about Finding Out Day. Well, it should there should be there. It should be there. Like it it says that every day had like its own like theme. Yeah. You're like Monday treasure, Tuesday dress up, Wednesday animal, et cetera, et cetera. And it says Friday was finding out day. Scroll down a little bit then. Well, I, like I'm looking at it and there's there's nothing really like it talks about imagination day. Mm-hmm. Okay. It, so you you look that up while I talk about the next show. I've been looking it up while you're talking about it this whole time. I don't think it exists. Oh, it does. No, I know it exists. I just don't think that there's an, like a real explanation. It does. I don't think. I don't think uh, maybe maybe I'm just bad at research. Maybe, maybe. Okay, so the next show that we're going to talk about is a show that that's near and dear to my heart. All right, let's okay. hear it. Near and dear to my heart. This was a Canadian show. It was filmed in downtown Toronto, Ooh. and and uh, you can still visit a part of the show it doesn't look anything like what it did back then in the 80s i don't imagine but, it would but uh you could still kind of visit it and it was called today's special today's special today's special so look that up on wikipedia uh so people following along to us we won't go too heavy into these shows we're probably going to have a shorter episode today but uh it was called today's special it was on from 1981 to 1987. So, so this was early, early in my childhood because I was born in 1981. So, like, it was on from when I was an infant to I was about six years old. Oh, yeah, and there's like seven seasons here. And it's still in my head. Still in my head from, from, from way back then. I have I have seen every single episode. Um, I've spoken to a couple members of the cast. Maybe you can in, add to the Wikipedia too at some point. In, in real life, no, I'm not going to add anything. I don't know. I don't know anything <laughs> about that. Not much here. Not much here. But I've spoken to a couple people from the cast and, and things like that. But the premise of the show was that uh, Jody who was the uh, night 
night display person. Like she makes all the displays in a department store. Oh, okay. Okay. So she, she goes in at night and makes all these displays for, for different departments. Right. So she goes in at right. night and, and, uh, she, there is a magic mannequin. There's a mannequin in there. Okay. That, I'm getting night of the museum vibes that, that a magician puts a spell on a hat and the hat when on the mannequin brings the mannequin to life. So now is it the mannequin that's magic or the hat? It's the hat that's magic. Okay. Right. But I guess, I guess I should have said the magic hat, right? There's a magic hat where when it lands on the mannequin, it only works for the mannequin. Like you can't put it, at least I don't think you can because, because it's only ever been on the mannequin. Now, so in theory, I could bring the Statue of Liberty to life by putting hat. hat on it if you really wanted to go there, right? But they never did. And the mannequin was named Jeff. I so there, hmm. so there was there was Jody, uh, you know, Jody played by uh, Noreen Virgin. Apparently, Jeff uh, the mannequin was named after the actor. It was because Jeff Hislop or Hislop or I don't even know how to pronounce that last name was. Was, I think uh, it's Hislop. Hislop, maybe. I don't know. Um, right. What played played Jeff. So when the hat landed on Jeff, you have to say magic words. Now, I've had these words in my head for a million years, and I'd be able to say them off the top of my head at any time. It's Hocus Pocus Alamogocus. Alamogocus. Okay. Alamogocus. So you, so, you, you say so you put the hat so you put the hat on the mannequin head and you say hocus pocus alamogocus and the hat comes and the hat brings the mannequin alive. All now, right. Now, you know what? Other, sure. Other other characters was Sam the night watchman, like the security guard, and Muffy the mouse who did nothing but speak in rhyme. Muffy would speak, could speak, but in all rhyme. He couldn't speak in any other way. It, it, was, a, it was a female mouse. She couldn't speak in any other way. In Sorry. any other way. All in rhyme. And any other mouse character that was related to Muffy that would come on would all speak in rhyme. They were you all think that. that- do you think the magician big... came in and like cursed the mice, the mice? No, and the, and the no, no, no. It was a department store. It was actually the Hudson's Bay, Hudson's Bay Company. Oh, really? The Hudson's Bay Company. Yeah. And to this day, off one of the side streets of the Eaton Center, downtown Toronto, is the store that they used. Some of it was actually filmed inside the store. It doesn't look anywhere close to what the store looked like back then. But it's still that the outside of the store. And and every time I go to the Eaton Center, I just look at it and be like, wow, like that is nostalgic to me, even though it doesn't look like anything. It doesn't look anything like it did back then. But you can probably like see like how it was arranged like in your head, wouldn't you? Oh, I, I totally can. I totally can. Like I have a t-shirt with today's special on it. Seriously. I do. I don't know why do. that surprised me. And I bought it from for, TV. For I bought it from there. TVO because TVO, TV Ontario, right? Was yep, the big, good old was, TiVo. Good old TiVo was was the care was where it was back in the day. Right. I think I actually met someone from TiVo um, that one of my professors brought in from uh, like for for one Probably. of my classes. Probably. Now, her name was. now, now before before I'm going to go on to the 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 there's two more I'm going to bring up. We're gonna move okay. on from we're gonna move on from today's special. Uh, two more I'm gonna bring up. Uh, the first I'm gonna save the best one for last, but the first one that I'm gonna bring up, um, with well, the weirdest one. So I'm sorry, I'm gonna save the weirdest one for last. Not the best, the weirdest. Not the best. In my opinion, this next show is is the is the epitome of what wanted me to be the entertainer than i am all right right uh because these this show was was a catalyst 
And I have been blessed to be able to tell the people in the show, except one, because one unfortunately passed away. Oh my God. That, that, that they were the catalyst in starting me on the entertainment world. So the show is called, I, oh my God, the elephant show. Yes. It's called the elephant show. Sharon, Lois and Bram's the elephant show. Okay. Oh my God. They were, they were on the, they were on the program. They I were. I was, I don't know if I was there that day. I don't think I was. No, I don't think you were, but, but Sharon, Lois and Bram to me as a Canadian boy growing up as a, as a, a Canadian boy that was capable of singing growing up in a, in a, in a music, in a music kind of family. Uh, you do have an amazing voice. I mean, well, thank you. Throw thank that you. in there. I, I appreciate that. But um, these three people, Sharon, Lois, and Bram. Okay, Sharon Hampson, Lois Lillenstein, and Bram Morrison uh, were my idols growing up. Absolute idols. When you were talking about them and about how you were so excited to have them like in the studio. I had never seen you that excited about anything. Hands down, hands down. I have met, I have met many famous people in my life. River song. I, I've met, I've <laughs> met river song. I've met, um, oh, why is his name is escaping me right now? The dude that played in the mummy. Oh my the, God. What is it? Brent, Brent, Brendan Fraser. Brent Fraser, met, oh my god. I've, I've met Brendan Fraser, I've met uh Carrot Top, I've met you know uh a lot of famous people in my life. But hands down, the most excited I've ever been was meeting Sharon and Bram. Unfortunately, Lois has passed away. Lois passed away of cancer a a, oh, a few years back. That's really sad. I know it is, but I Bless was able her. to meet Sharon and Bram. Okay. And without question, they were like, to me as a Canadian, again, as a Canadian boy growing up as a Canadian boy who was doing music a lot was, these were my idols. They really were. So, so that's Sharon Lewis and Bram. So people want to look them up. People, you know, cause we have, we have some listeners in the States. And we actually have some listeners in Albania. <laughs> and all that sort of, yeah, Albania. Albania. We have some listeners in Albania. We have some listeners overseas. And <clears throat> if you want to look them up, if you can, go on the internet, go on Google, uh, and look up Sharon Lois and Bram. And uh and and you can you can see where I'm talk you can see what I'm talking about. Now, this is a a folk trio. Right. So they were a folk trio that um, would take folk songs and and turn them into, uh, you know. It, it would wouldn't quite dumb them down, but they would play them in a way that were interesting to kids. OK. Right. OK. I, li I already like that. So, so, you know, so that's, that's what, that's what they were, they, they were doing. Like it went on from, uh, what, during the eighties, they started as a trio in 1978 and, and during the eighties and, and early, early nineties, they had a show called the elephant show on CBC. Um, it, it played in the U S under Nickelodeon and things like that. So some of our U S our U S listeners may know who they are. But, you know, so it's, it's this, this, this was, this was my show. This was my show. You know, to you, like, this is my Pokemon to you. Like you're really into Pokemon, right? Oh, you have no idea. Yeah. You're really into Pokemon. So this was back then my Pokemon. I would know all these songs. And to this day, I still know these songs. I have two kids. Okay, I'm happy to Please say that. Tell me you've shown them the the elephant show. Not only have I shown them the elephant show, 
but they have also met Sharon and Bram and they have also been to a concert of Sharon and Bram. Like I was able to go to a Sharon Lois and Bram concert back in the early, early nineties when they came here as a trio, you know, back in the day. And, and so and able to share them with my kids is, is, is one cool thing. But the best thing, at least for me, was that Bram played my guitar. Oh my God. You told me this. He played, he played, uh, my guitar. He played their most famous song, Sharon Lewis and Bram is Skinnamarink. Skinnamarink, dinky dink, you know, Skinnamarink, do. Yeah, that kind of thing. We're going to sing it because we're going to get hit with copyrights, but yeah. But yeah, so they, Bram and Lois and uh, Sharon and Bram, sorry, Sharon and Bram played Skinnamarink on my guitar and signed my guitar. And I put the guitar back in its case and no one has touched it since. You know, so I I almost guarantee that would be worth a lot, a lot of money. Well, that will go into the grave with me. So that, that guitar was never there, but that's, I'm not going to go into, I'm not going to go into, you know, too, too much because, because uh, I could, you could, you could go on for hours. I could go on for hours about this, but Sharon Lewis and Bram, I was honored to meet Sharon and Bram and, and talk with them in the studio and highlight of my entire career. End of story right there. Okay. Nothing will top that, do you think? Nothing, nothing will top that. Like, okay, one small little more story before we move on to the weirdest one of Canadian TV, at least in my eyes, the weirdest one. There have been pretty some weird ones, but this one's, I think, almost tops it. Um, I'm a big acapella fan, right? It's another music yep. thing. I'm a big acapella fan. I, uh, a, could you just explain for everyone at home who doesn't know what acapella is? Acapella is music with no instruments. So, so you are you are doing all the instrumentals with your mouth. If there's instrumentals to be done, if there's like uh like things like that, I it's like a barbershop harmony. It's, it's like a shoebop shoebop thing. Shoebop 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 that kind of that kind of stuff. Um, so I'm into acapella. I sing acapella. I'm a former barbershopper. Uh, I've done my time in a barbershop quartet, been there, done that, did a barbershop show, performed for hundreds and hundreds of people in a barbershop quartet, been there, done that. Even I was even in the Music Man, for those people who are mus- in mu- who likes musicals. I've done the Music Man, so I've done pretty much almost all there is needs to do in the barbershop world, with the exception of win medals and things like that, which you can do, but I digress. Back right. when I back when I was in college, Learned a thing. yeah. Well, you're always didn't there. know you could didn't know you could do that. Yeah, you totally can. Um, BarbershopHarmonySociety.com. Look it up. Anyways, um, back when I was in college, my roommate uh, at the time, Dave, who I still talk to, who were still great friends. Um, I was at their wedding, the whole nine yards. I was there the day he met his wife. But you know that's a thing. So when I was still in college, Dave and I were roommates. Dave took Dave and I went to New York City, and there we met the the best a cappella group at the time, Rockapella. Those are the same Rock-a-pella. guys. Rockapella. Rockapella. Those are the same guys who did the theme song of "Where in the World's Carmen Sandiego," right? And okay. and so they did, which was a show for kids back in the '90s called "Where in the World's Carmen Sandiego," right? Had right. Them computer game and the whole thing works but i was able to meet them i've listened to them for years and you know to 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 kind of match it up almost the same but not quite because sharon olsen bram is number one they i went there around my birthday and so i don't know how they managed to do it but rockapella sang me happy birthday Oh my God. So after years and years and years of seeing them on TV and singing Where in the World's Carmen San Diego and blah, 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 Rock Capella sang me happy birthday. So that was, no. that's, did that's they up sing there. like the actual happy birthday or did they do like their own thing? Oh, they sang me happy, actual happy birthday, but they put harmony in it and beatboxing and the whole nine yards. Okay. <laughs> so they they kind of, they remixed it. They remixed it, but, but still they sang me happy birthday. So that was pretty, that was pretty cool. But anyways, pretty awesome. Sharon Lewis and Bram, 
number one highlight of my career, but that's not really a weird show. I just wanted to introduce you to Sharon Lowe's and Bram, uh, which they are still now performing. Unfortunately, Bram has, has retired. So Sharon and her daughter are, are still performing. Sharon, you know, they're, they're pretty up there. You know, Sharon's 77 years old and Lois died at age 78 and Bram is 79. So when they, when they were doing their show, you know, back in the eighties, they were in their thirties, early forties. That's incredible. It really shows that like, you you know, you, you're never, it's it's never too late to start up a a thing. That's right. It's okay. So. Uh, the last one we're going to talk about, and this will likely be the last one, we'll probably end it here, is I want you to go to Wikipedia. Already done. Actually, actually, yeah, before you go to Wikipedia, I want you to go to YouTube. Right. Go to YouTube. Opening okay? YouTube. You you have to watch this theme song. Okay? All Type right. in uh, The Hilarious House of Frightenstein. Frightenstein, okay. the hilarious house of Frightenstein. All right, I have the intro here. Play the intro. We're gonna put a link to to this. This is yeah, let, me, oh, let me grab oh, this here. Oh my goodness! So if you if you yeah okay there there's the link to it. Okay, now you can't hear the audio, but I'm gonna play this right now. I'm playing. I'm looking at it at the same time you are. That is legitimately. That that is uh I forget his name now. I honestly forget his name. Uh, who was it? Vincent the Price. Opening monologue of yeah. 1970s cult children's live action television show. Yeah, the hilarious house of Frightenstein. Yeah, this is This is um This is, camp. um, yeah. yeah, yeah. So what? It's um, it's, it's campy. <coughs> it's campy. It's it's uh really, really, really. Back in the day, it was well done. You know I mean, mean it, there's a lot of opacity work, <laughs> right? <laughs> right and, in the intro, and you can still watch this on TV. You can still watch it on TV. It's on Crave. No. Yeah. Do you have Crave? No. Do you have no, Crave? No, no, it's not allowed. Do you, do you have Crave? I don't actually have Crave. Okay. So you can still watch this on streaming networks like Crave. It's still there. Uh, Why? 100, 130 episodes. Um, I'm going to the Wikipedia. Yeah. 130 episodes. And and yeah, it's just the hilarious house of Frankenstein. Uh, it was syndicated here in, in – it was made in Hamilton, Hamilton, Ontario in 1971. Oh, my God. Right? Uh, so it only had one season, but – It did only have one season, but, but it had 130 episodes. episodes oh and God. and they – Vincent Price did all of his scenes, okay? So Vincent Price – minutes. Would, yeah, Vincent Price would introduce each scene. Like each each character, right? He'd have this monologue that he would say on a porch, like like a little porch, and and it would all be in rhyme, right? It was like a verse, like he would say a verse, and he would introduce right. he would introduce a character, right? Now some of the characters, the Wolfman, were ninety percent of the show was done by one guy. All the characters, like. At least ninety percent were all done by one guy, Billy Van. Seriously? Yep, all one guy. The Wolfman, Bawana Bide, Bawana B- Clyde Batty, uh, the Count, the Librarian, the Oracle, Doctor Pet Vet, Harvey, you know, Griselda, and and things like that were all done by one guy. It was Hart was Billy Van? That's impressive. And and so there. It was a very small cast. It was just Billy Van, uh, Fiska Reyes, who's passed away, uh, Guy Big, Mark 
uh, Mitch Markowitz, Vincent Price, and Julius Sumner Miller. That's it. There was just five people, six people. And, and there was like seven or eight characters. It was, it was pretty, it was pretty good, but it was campy. Like really, 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 really campy. Um, the, the plot line, you know, the, the, the plot line for this whole thing was Count Frankenstein's effort to revive a Frankenstein type monster. Like there would be, there would be this Frankenstein type monster on a, on a, on a, like a, like a slab over in the corner. Right. And the core premise of the show that he would be allowed to return. He was banished to this castle. Okay. Banished to this council, to this ca- castle. And he would only be allowed to return to Transylvania if he was able to bring the fright, the Frankenstein monster who was called Brucey J. Monster. <coughs> All right, yeah, sure. A bit of a cold. It's not. It's not the beer. <clears throat> so I have a bit of a cold. It's. Uh, <clears throat> it's not a uh, great time to have. Uh, to have a no, cough. no, it's not. But uh, anyway, so he would only be allowed to return to Transylvania if he brought the uh, Frankenstein monster to life. That that was it. Wow. Yep. Did did he did he do it? In the end, I don't remember. But Count Frightenstein was a vampire. He apparently um, according to Wikipedia, he was the thirteenth son of Count Dracula. That you know what? He was the thirteenth son of Count Dracula. <laughs> you know what? Sure. Let's go with that. Yeah. Why not? And he was banished because he was the black sheep in the family. And I'm getting this off Wikipedia for his strong preference for eating pizza rather than drinking blood. You know, that would probably appeal to children. Well, back in 1971. Yeah, maybe. I imagine a lot of a lot of children would find that relatable. You know, they would prefer to eat pizza over blood. Well, a lot. That's true. That's very true. So back in 1971, like remember the the ch- children in 1971 who are our parents now, right? Um, so parents I mean, are are not are mine. not yours because your your mom is my age. Yeah, but her parents would have been like teenagers or things like that back in 1971. So. It was a totally different time back then. So this is a weird, weird show. So look it up. People are listening. Look it up. Tell us your opinions on on our social media if you do look it up. But yeah, this is this is a whole thing. It's actually really, uh, really interesting. This stuff. I'm I really on. wish I could play for you the theme. You know what I mean? I really wish I could I could play for you the theme, but I can't. Because yeah, you know, uh, co- CBS television would probably strike us immediately. Well, I'm not sure whether they're owned by CBS. I don't know. Well, uh, the house it's it says um, distributor. The, yeah. CBS. Well, I guess it's still available to Crave. It's available to stream on Crave, but only in Canada. All right. Maybe. Well, you heard it here first. You know, if you wanna if you wanna watch it, you gotta be in Canada or have you a get, VPN. Or well. You can go on YouTube and watch it. Or that. You know, you can go on YouTube and watch it. Absolutely. Um, there are a lot of options. There are a lot of options. But yeah, so the weirdest show, in my opinion, if anyone else knows a weirder show, please let me know. Please tweet me, get a hold of me somehow, leave a message somewhere. And 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 I'll get it, and we'll on 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 an upcoming podcast. Maybe maybe that's what we should do. If you have a question for us, if you have anything like that for us, uh, on an upcoming podcast, we'll do a question and answer period from our hundred percent. Send yeah. it our way at there's no Josh on Instagram and Twitter, and there's nobody here named Josh podcast on Facebook. Mm-hmm. 
drop us a lot on Facebook and things like that. So the hilarious House of Frightenstein, in my opinion, was the worst, not the worst, but the the weirdest Canadian children's television show. That is so, like from what I'm looking at, it's it's a little bit weird. It is it is something, that's for sure. Yeah, you know, so it's just that's just that's just it. So, you know, that that's that's uh that's my part of this whole podcast thing. I think I think the whole uh question and debate thing at the very beginning was really good. I think well, I'm was- glad you had fun with that. I did. I did really have fun and I'm still having fun with it, you know? So, and I think that we can, we can, uh, do more later on. A hundred percent. I'd be we could totally, to. totally do more later on. So I don't know how long we've been going for, but that's, that's fine. But we're going to do, we're going to end it here. You know okay? what? You know, what's really interesting. What? Uh, so Kevin and I both thought that this was going to be a relatively shorter one. We've been going for about an hour and 31 minutes now. But that's 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 perfect. That's perfect. That's a exactly great exactly as long as we want it to go for. That's right. So so you know, I again, if you guys have any ideas of what we could talk about for our upcoming podcast, please give us a line, please lay down an idea. If you are uh an expert on something, if you're an expert on TV shows, if you're if you're part of a TV show or whatever, drop us a line. We may even put you on the podcast. I don't know. You never we know. We would be can... interested to hear about it, actually. We totally would. We totally, totally would. Like again, we have we have uh listeners in the United States and I know goods from the woods. Uh another shout out to Goods from the Woods. Uh speaking who... of, uh I followed them on Twitter and I got a follow back. Good. Right? So now Goods it's from the good. Woods Goods from the Woods, they uh they they tweeted us out and now we're gonna we're gonna shout them back out. So people who listen from there, if you guys are listening for us, uh give us a give us a tweet back, give us a message on Facebook, and and you might be on an upcoming episode of There's There's Nobody Here Named Josh. Uh, but we're going to end it right here. So thanks for listening to There's Nobody Here Named Josh podcast. Uh, I'm Kevin, your host, alongside Mr. Will. I am I am also here. You're here. If you weren't here, here. Where, would, where would you be? Uh, well, I'd be everywhere, but nowhere, all at the same time. Ooh, hashtag deep. Hashtag uh, deep. <laughs> There's Nobody Here Named Josh podcast is produced by Adam Upper, a.k.a. Stump Chunkman, and our logo was created by the amazing Al- Aaron Alessandrini, who couldn't be here today. And once again, you can follow what we're doing on our social media. Uh, there's nobody here named Josh Podcast on Facebook, and there's uh, at... <laughs> wow, I'm getting all tongue-tied. Uh, there's... there's no Josh on Instagram and Twitter. <laughs> That's right. There's no Josh on Instagram and Twitter. There's nobody here named Josh podcast on Facebook and even on YouTube. Uh, so you can find us all again, drop us a line and uh, we'll, we'll put you on the show. Anything you need to say before we go, Mr. Mr. Uh, you Will. know what? I'm, I'm going to plug one more time. My, my Twitch that is twitch.tv forward slash Ryan man three R I M A N three. If you're interested in checking some of those live streams out, be sure to drop a follow if you want to be notified on any live streams. Okay. So you do that, and we're going to end it here. All right? Yeah, it's been good. All right. We will see you later. Take care.